together, praise God. My sister Soul rendering that wonderful song. I'm blessed. Shall praise the Lord if you know you're blessed. Glory at this time. Put your hands together for our pastor. Yeah. Uh-huh. Verse 16. And said unto him, Hear 
Hearest thou what these say? And Jesus said unto them, Yea, have you never read out of the mouth of babes and sucklings thou hast perfected praise? What they gave tonight was a no play play praise. Amen. 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 Perfected yeah. praise. Amen. Amen. Read on. Amen. So, let the children praise the Lord. Yeah. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings. Now, all I'm going to say to the church is, listen, don't let the children beat you praising God. Amen. Can the church say amen? Amen. amen. So, we just thank God for the jubilant spirit that the children have. Amen. Let us continue to nurture that in them yeah. so that when they are old, they will not depart from it. Oh, God. We go tonight to the book of Hebrews. Amen. As you know where the Lord led us last night. And to whom the Lord spoke, the Lord spoke. Amen. Amen. You know your portion. Just do exactly what the word say. Amen. Hebrews chapter 9. How many begin to understand what it is that Jesus did? for you at Calvary. Amen. His blood being shed. Amen. How he brought about redemption for our sins. Amen? amen. And so in Hebrews 9, when you have it, say amen. amen. And we, we saw it in verse 10, it says that these things stood only in meats and drinks and divers washings and carnal ordinances imposed on them until the time of reformation. Amen? Verse 11 says, but Christ they come, the high priest of what? Good things to come. That's what we're looking for. Good things to come, uh-huh, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building. Amen? So in other words, something better is on the way. Amen? Christ has built a better temple. Can you say amen? Now look at verse 12. What does it say? Neither by the blood of goats and cows, but by what? His own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption. How did he get into the church? By his own blood. He couldn't go in there without his blood. Amen? Just like the high priest on earth had no reason to go into the, into the holies of all, except he had blood. Amen. Amen. He had to offer blood not only for the people, but he had to also offer it for himself. Right. But with Jesus, he was without sin. Amen. But he offered his blood for our sins. And then he entered into the holy place. In the church, say amen. amen. Now look at verse 13. What does it say? If the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of an heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctify it to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit, what did he do? Offered himself without spot to God. Purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Amen, church? Amen. That's what the blood of Jesus Christ did for you and I. It washed us. Now, sprinkling of the blood. Go right next door to 1 Peter chapter 2, chapter 1. 1 Peter 1. Now, just as the ashes and the hapless blood were sprinkled in the temple on the mercy seat, Look in 1 Peter chapter 1, read the second verse. What does it say? According to the foreknowledge of God, uh -huh, to sanctification of the Spirit, and what? Yes. See now, it's not the sprinkling of the blood of goats anymore. It's the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Now see that blood, that holy blood, that righteous blood, when it was shed on Calvary, and 
want you to know that that didn't just run down into the earth. That blood was taken up into heaven. And it was sprinkled on the mercy seat. His blood was sprinkled there for you and I. Just as the blood had to be sprinkled on the mercy seat in the Old Testament. Amen. It had to be sprinkled on the mercy seat for you and I in the heavens. In the church say amen. Go back to Hebrews 9 and 14. How much more shall the blood of Christ go through the eternal spirit offer himself without spot to God? See, he was the spotless lamb. Purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Now, look at that 15th verse. What does it say? And for this cause, he is the mediator of which testament? Of the New Testament. That by means of what? See, he had to die. By means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal Inherit. So he had to fulfill the sacrifice of every lamb, ram, bull, bullock, and goat that was sacrificed in the Old Testament. Jesus Christ came to fulfill that in the New Testament. Yeah. Amen. You understand that? Amen. Amen. And so because of that, you and I, we receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Church, get happy about Jesus. Yeah. This thing ain't going to end for you. Yeah. When you get saved now, you, listen, you got eternal life in you now. Come on. And so you all, all you do is you transition from this life, amen, into everlasting life. Now look at verse 16. For where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. I'm going to explain that. But you got to read the 17 words first. For a testament is a force after men are dead. Otherwise, it is of no strength at all while the testator lives. Now, Jesus Christ brought us what? The New Testament. Moses had the Old Testament or the Old Will. Jesus Christ came with a New Testament, a New Will, and a New Testament. Now, in simple terms, you as an individual, when you write your last will and testament, what do you do? You bequeath your earthly goods to your heirs and your successors. Am I right? You will put in your testament or your will. It's called a testament and a will. My house go to my son, my car to my daughter, my money to my wife, or whatever. However you line that up in the will and in the testament, that's the way it is, right? But as long as that person is living, that will ain't got no power. You can walk around and go as much as you say, boy, this on the will for me. As long as the testator or the person that makes the will is living, look at verse 17, it has no force. In order for that will and testament to come into effect, the testator or the one that made the will has to die. You get that, church? Jesus Christ is the mediator. He negotiated for us. He brought for us the New Testament. But the New Testament will have no power or force until Christ dies. And then when he dies, every single promise made to you in this New Testament is yours. Right now. You are heirs with Christ and joint heirs. Did y'all get it, church? All these promises are yours now. Did you test 
steal or die? Yes. So then now the will is of force. Yes. Everybody understand that? Yes. Let's read verse 16 and 17 again. Now. For where a testament is, there must of necessity also be the death of the testator. You have to die. Now, how many remember that Jesus break the Passover bread and they drank the cup and he break the bread and he passed it to his disciples. What did he say? This is my blood in the New Testament shed for you. This do in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread, drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death until he comes. And so he did it in type and then he did it in reality at the cross. Are you understanding God's redemption plan? Amen, church? Amen. So read verse 16 and 17 again. For where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. For a testament is of force after men are dead. Otherwise, it is of no strength at all while the testator living. Now, clarification, verse 18. Whereupon, neither the first testament was dedicated without blood. How many remember at, at, at Sinai when Moses dedicated the first testament, blood had to be shed. Let's read, verse 19 will tell you. For when Moses had spoken, what? Every precept to all the people according to the law he took the blood of cows and of goats with water and scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled both the book and all the people. What do you say, church? This is the blood of the testament which God had enjoined unto you. This is the blood. God commanded this testament to you. So the children of Israel, their first covenant was dedicated with blood. Can the church say amen? Uh-huh. Verse 21. Moreover, what happened? He sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry. Now you can understand what Peter is talking about in 1 Peter 1 and 2. Amen. Elect according to the foreknowledge of God through sanctification, amen, of the spirit and the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. It's no longer the sprinkling of the blood of bulls and goats and cows. Amen? For us in the New Testament, the blood of Jesus Christ was sprinkled for our sins. Are you getting it, church? Amen. Understand. So you, when you shout again, you know what you're shouting about. When you sing again, you know what you're singing about. You dance, you're, you're dancing because you understand the salvation plan of God. Can you try to say amen? Verse 20, everybody read again. Say, this is the blood of the testament which God had enjoined unto you. Verse 21. Moreover, he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry. And listen to verse 22 now. And almost all things are by the law purged with blood. And without the shedding of blood is no Mission. You can't get rid of your sins without the shedding of blood, sir. Now, how many know, see, all the sin we carried when we were born, when we came to the realization that Christ's blood was shed for those sins, what did we do? We confessed it. And when you confess your sins, the blood of Jesus Christ, the power of the blood, kicks in and washes your sins away. Simple as that. The power of the blood is working right now. All God waits on is for man to acknowledge that they believe that there is power in that blood to wash away their sins. And so, listen church, there, there is not a single soul on earth or in hell, those in hell that needed to go there. Because the blood had the power to wash all and sundry from Adam up until now. Say amen. amen. If you make a mistake, get up under the blood. Amen. 
Amen. You fall down, ask God to cover you once again in the blood. The blood ain't losing no power. Huh? Almost all things are by law purged with blood and without shedding of blood is no remission or simply no forgiveness. Now, was the blood shed? Yes. So there's plenty for forgiveness in Jesus Christ. Yes. One simply has to acknowledge, Lord, I believe. Yes. Come on. You didn't go for how long you shout, how good you could preach, Amen. dance and speak in tongues. You just simply believe. Let your mind go back. On the night of the Passover, the dead angel was about to pass through the land. God instructed Moses to kill a lamb, put the blood in a basin, and strike the blood over the doorposts. And he said to them, listen, stay in the house, for the dead angel will pass through the land. But he says, when I see the blood, <laughs> whenever I pass through the land, whatever house, when I see that blood in the lamb, I'm just going to keep on going. Why? Because the blood will shed for their remission. The blood will shed for their forgiveness. Now, how simple is it? Put, put the blood on the door and do what? Go inside and stay. You think anybody was in there shouting and dancing and speaking and talking and rolling all over the place? No. Their faith was, I must stay inside this house under the blood. Now, by faith, you and I have entered into the blood covenant with Jesus. And so we are under the blood. Church, stay under the blood. How? By faith. How many believe that blood was shed? That's all it takes. Amen, church? Amen. Now let's read that again. Verse 22. And almost all things are by the law purged with blood and without shedding of blood is no remission. Now look at verse 23. It was therefore necessary. Uh huh. Here we come right back to what? The patterns. That the patterns of things in the heavens should be purified with these. But the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifice. See, we needed something better than the blood of goats. The blood of the blood of bulls and rams and lambs and bullocks. Can the church say amen? Now look at verse 24. What does it say? For Christ is not entered into the holy place made with hands, which are the figure of the true, but into heaven itself. Now to appear where? In the presence of God for us. Now you got to remember in the Old Testament, that's what I'm going to bring you to, perhaps not tonight, but I want to show you back in the Old Testament, the high priest went into the holiest of all to do what? He went before the mercy seat of God to present the blood of the lambs that were slain for the sins of the people. Jesus Christ having shed his blood, he now has the right to go before the Father, present that blood before the Father, and he obtains eternal redemption for us. Amen. You. you and I couldn't go there. No, Come on, church. Amen. You and I couldn't go into the holies of all. No. But now we can come how boldly to the throne of grace. Oh, how did it happen? Through the precious blood. You're not defeated. Amen. Devil try to make you feel like you ain't got no power. But you got the power. Amen. Come on, church. Walk in that victory tonight. Yes. Huh? Amen. Read verse 24 again. Go on. For Christ has not entered into the holy places, made with hands, which are the figure of the truth. But into heaven itself. Where? Where's Christ? In heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. How many glad that's where Christ is right now? That's why, listen to me, church. If you fall down, talk to your Savior. Where is he? He is in the presence of God for you. Amen. 
Amen. Verse 25 says what? Nor yet that he should offer himself often as the high priest entered into the holy place every year with the blood of others. Uh-huh. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now. But now. Once. How much time? Once. In the end of the world. See, I tell you, we're living in the last days. Once in the end of the world had he appeared to do what? Put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Church say amen. amen. He done put it away. Amen. The blood was shed. Amen, amen church? Amen. And as it is appointed unto man once to die, but after this the judgment, so Christ was once offered to do what? Bear the sins of many. And unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin. Unto sin. How many are you looking for him the second time? Amen. He didn't put away your sin. Yes. Don't let the devil put you on a guilt trip. If you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to do what? Forgive you? And to cleanse you from how many? All. That is the power of the blood. Yeah. How many glad about the blood? Yeah. Washes, yeah. cleanses, and purges. Can you trace amen? amen? Now let me just give you one scripture before I close. Why blood? Why? Why me Leviticus chapter 17 in the Old Testament? Chapter 17. When you have it, say amen. amen. Read verse 11. What does it say? For the life of the flesh. Where is the life of the flesh? Blood is the only thing in this whole universe that has life in it. Amen, church? That's why if you get cut, if you don't stop that blood from flowing out, that's your life pouring out of your body. And I want you to know, life, blood has a life of its own. When Cain killed Abel, what did God tell Cain? The voice of thy brother's blood crying out from the ground unto me. Blood can talk. Can the church say amen? Abel was dead, but the blood was talking. The blood, the life in the blood was crying out to God. Did y'all get that? Amen. Look at verse 11. For the life of the flesh is in the blood. Amen. And what does he say? I have given it to you upon the altar to do what? To make an atonement for your soul. It's not for your body. It's to make an atonement for your soul. The word atonement means covering. Our souls became naked through sin. Hello? Amen. What happened to Adam and Eve when their sins were revealed to them? Their eyes were... Open. And what did God do? God made them coats of skins to cover their nakedness. Yeah. Now how many know there were animals that lived in those skins before they became coats? Yeah. Hello? So their blood had to be shed so that man can be covered. First sacrifice. Can the church say amen? And you and I, we were made naked. 
You remember when Moses came down from the mountain? And he saw the people worshipping before the golden calf. But he told Aaron, you made these people naked. Sin makes you naked. Come on, church. And so the blood comes and what? Covers our soul. The word atonement means to cover. And so when the blood of Jesus Christ, when you accept the blood, what happens is that blood covers you. And that's why God told Moses, y'all stay under the blood, because when I see the blood, what's going to happen? You know, that's you're born good. You think you're born right. We came to the world speaking lies. Only but the grace of God and the blood that what? Covers our soul. And when he see that blood, because you accept it by faith, Jesus died for you. In the church say amen. When he see the blood. I don't know about you, but I'm so glad he's just going to pass right over yes. and say, welcome, my son. Yes. Can church say amen again? Yes. So let's read that 17 verse again, the 11th verse, chapter 17, verse 11. For the life of the flesh is in the blood, for I have given it to you upon the altar to do what? To make atonement for your souls. Why? For it is blood that maketh atonement for you. You hear that, church? Only blood does it. Whose blood that we have today? The blood of Jesus yeah. Christ. Amen. Can you try to say amen? amen? The blood of Jesus Christ. So Christ once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. That is the power of of the blood. Amen. Can the church say amen? amen? By faith, stay under the blood. Rejoice in the blood and glory in the cross of Jesus Christ. Yes. Let us all stand. Amen. How many thank God for the blood? Amen. Put your hands together for God's praise. Thank you for the blood of Jesus. The cleansing power of the blood. The purging power of the blood. The sanctifying power of the blood of Christ bow your heads at this time. Our Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you tonight for that blood that has brought atonement for our souls, even the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shared at Calvary, brought into the holy place, sprinkled before the altar for the sanctification of our souls. We thank you for this great and tender blessing from you, O oh God, in Jesus' name, all God's children say, May the Lord bless you as you rejoice in the blood of Christ. Wednesday night, we'll be back in the house of the Lord. By his grace and mercy, until then, shake hands. Be in peace among yourselves and stay covered by the blood. God bless you.